Welcome back to The Lemon Factor. I'm Chad and today um, we're going to take a look at lowering springs for the 10th generation Honda Accord. So the 2018 and newer Honda Accord specifically looking for springs for our project car, our 2019 Honda Accord 2.0 Touring. And my pause was you know, I thought this would be an exciting video to do. I'm always excited about the prospect of lowering the car because I think lowering springs really helps with the aesthetics of the car. Uh, so really removing that huge gap between the wheel and the wheel well, that unsightly gap that most of us do not enjoy, bringing it down a little bit. So aesthetics definitely helps with aesthetics. And then changing out your springs will help with your handling or should help with your handling, right? Your, your performance, your lateral acceleration, the feeling, you know, under braking and, and launching, uh, that combined with shocks, of course. So thinking about changing out the springs of the car, uh, I was very excited about doing that until I started looking at what springs are out there. So the good thing or the bad thing is there's a ton of springs available for our, our Honda Accord, which is great, but there's a ton of springs available for our Honda Accord, which is overwhelming. So what I did was I went through a whole bunch of, uh, I'm looking at a list here, 10 different springs available. So not an extensive list. I mean, it's not all inclusive, but it's the top springs. And I wanna go over those with you. So if you stay tuned, you're gonna find out what the differences are between these springs, some of the pricing, the spring rates. Some of these springs, do the OEMs do not identify what the spring rates are on their website, and I had to give them a call, and I do have that for you, so I can provide you with the spring rate. But also, there's a gotcha when looking at these springs, especially for the Honda Accord. So I wanna make sure that you are aware of some of the issues you can run into when changing out your springs. So if you're interested in finding out what some of those potential concerns could be, if you're interested in finding out what's available, what's out there and how they compare to one another, both from a pricing perspective, maybe a spring rate, and definitely from how, uh, how much they lower the car, then stay tuned. Please don't forget to subscribe, turn on notifications, like, share, and comment below. Let me know what you thought of this video. Let me know what other videos you'd like to see in the future. And yeah, let me know if you have some of these springs yourself, if you have experience or you're considering some, I'd love to hear from you, especially as we decide what to do with our project car. So let's jump into it. Let's go to the computer and take a look at some of the springs that are available. And to start off with, I am starting in no particular order. I'm gonna to go to the Eibach website. And on the Eibach website, it does indicate that for the 2019, or I should say for the 10th generation Honda Accord, they do offer their two most popular uh, spring sets, which is great. Not a surprise, Eibach is one of the largest companies when it comes to springs and been producing springs for quite some time. I've used them in, in the past and had good experiences with them. So no product endorsement, just same personal experience has been good. So looking at the screen here, Eibach offers the Pro Kit as well as the Sport line. So the Pro Kit spring is a little bit less aggressive. So as you can see here, when it comes to a drop, you know, if you're going for that aesthetics and you're looking for, you know, the maximum drop to lower your car, it's, it's a conservative 0.8 inches, both for the front and the rear while the sport line gives a noticeable difference, you know, in, in drop uh, at 1.8 inches. And given a little bit more detail, let's just take a look at it. If you dive into it a little bit more, so the 0.8 inches is for the two liter, both front and rear. However, for you 1.5 liter Honda Accord owners, it's a little less of a drop in the back at 0.6 inches so just keep that in mind again that's for the pro kit now the sport line is exactly the same 1.8 inches both front and rear when it comes to the spring rates i did have to give them a call for the pro kit and i'll have a chart up here for you so you can see this all in comparison so you don't have to rush and write any notes down for the pro kit the front springs are linear at 160 pounds per inch the rear is progressive from 97 pounds per inch to 240. And to compare that, this 
sport line, the IBAC sport line in the front are 100 are progressive and they're at 120 to 250 pounds per inch and the rears are at 97 to 300 pounds per inch so personally i like the the drop of the 1.8 inch sport line i like that it's progressive great springs both in the front and in the rear and i do like you know that range of spring rates from 120 to 250 in the front to and 97 to 300 in the rear. So I do like both of those. And when I looked uh, up just a couple websites to see the cost, they look about the same from what I found at about a little over $200. So call it two, 222 or $225 right around there. And IBAC did indicate that these springs can be used with the factory shocks. And they did indicate even with the touring. So I specifically asked uh, about the touring model and they did indicate that they should be usable. So jumping to the H&R. So the H&R, like IBAC, I do have experience with H&R springs as well. I have found, now I use them on two different cars, so there's no way, you know, a direct comparison, but I felt as though the H&R springs were uh, a little softer than the Eibach. When I called to ask them about their spring rates, they would not give it to me. They said they don't publish it, they don't put it out because there's not a standard way to measure spring rates. So that's the first potential lemon. And the lemon is for us, the consumer, if that truly is the case, and we're looking at spring rates across different springs, and there is not a consistent standard, and each manufacturer can have their own way of measuring that, that puts us at a disadvantage. So a little bit concerned with that. However, regardless, I'm gonna put the spring rates of what they publish or what they're telling me when I call them. And we'll just hope that relatively speaking, we can at least see that one Manufacturer may have springs at a little bit less spring rate, regardless of what the number is versus another. But that is something that I wasn't aware of. And if that is indeed true, again, you know, that was told to me by the H&R rep that when I Going back to the H&R, so they have two different types available for the 10th gen Honda Accord, the OE Sport and the Sport Springs. And if you jump into the details of these, let's take a look here. The OE Sport we have here offers a range of a quarter to 7, 0.75 inches. I'll go into specifics for our car in a minute. And then the Sport Springs are uh, more aggressive, 1.5 to 1.8 inches average drop. Those two are available. Now specific for the Honda Accord, it is 0.75, so three quarters of an inch drop front and rear for the OE Sport, and then for the Sport, it is 1.2 inch drop front and rear. And as I said, they don't offer their spring rates, they don't publish their spring rates. However, the rep did indicate that their OE Sport is just that. It is, they put OE in the name because it's just a step above your OEM uh, springs. And for the Sport, it is just a step above the OE Sport. And to me, that makes sense considering my experience using the H&R springs in the past, that it was, you, you could tell the difference. It wasn't a huge difference, but uh, subtle nonetheless, if you were looking for something that's just a mild step up while lowering your car, these might be a good spring for you. Now, when it comes to pricing, I did find the OE Sport for 255 out there, and then the Sport for 203. And all I did when it kind of came to this pricing, these are not the suggested retail price. I did a quick search using Google, went to a couple of different websites to try to find the best price. And I'm just putting, it, putting them out there for comparative purposes. One thing which was very informative was they did not test it on the adaptive suspension. So the suspension that comes with the Touring Accord, the Touring Model Accord, it was not tested with that, and they do not recommend these springs with the adaptive suspension, which is really disappointing. Uh, however, it's informative. You know, if you're considering that, nowhere is it written on their website, this information. However, the rep indicated that more or less, you're buying them at your own risk. Don't know how they feel or work with those adaptive shocks. So if you have a Touring Model, definitely keep that in mind. I have one, our project car is one, so I'm glad I have this piece of information. So don't turn it in, don't turn this purchase into a lemon. Make sure that you're aware of this ahead of time. So carrying on, let's go to the next one. Megan or Megan, 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 I don't know. Megan Racing, quite frankly, I've not heard of them. I 
did some research and yeah, you know, looking at YouTube videos myself, I saw these out there. So I don't know, let's jump to their website. Uh, nice people, when I call them to look for additional information, everybody's been super nice on the phone to me, which was great, really helpful. So here's their uh, springs, colorful orange. When it came to the pricing, the Megan Racing were definitely cheaper than the Eibach and the H&R at $130. So, you know, if price is, if you're price sensitive, you know, you might want to consider them. One thing to note though, the drop, it comes in between, I'd say the Eibach Sport Line's aggressive 1.8 inches and the H&R Sports 1.2 inches at so this is the Megan. This is 1.4 inch drop in the front and 1.3 inch drop in the rear. Uh, so I, I'd say that's pretty good. Uh, if you're looking to lower that, slam that Honda Accord down, get that low and really close that gap in that wheel well, you know, that's definitely a possibility. Their springs are progressive springs and in the front they range from 196 pounds per inch to 280. So progressively to 280. And then in the rear, it's 190 to 274 pounds per inch progressive. And they did indicate that you can use them with your OEM shocks. Uh, however, they do recommend aftermarket. So D2 Racing, they're pro springs. These are pretty aggressive springs dropping the car at two inches. So that's an aggressive drop. If you're looking for maximum drop in a spring you know these are probably the springs for you as far as the spring rates they did not quote their spring rates either when i called but the individual did say roughly 20 percent stiffer than oem spring so which is interesting that's not a lot i mean it, it should be noticeable you should feel it but not a huge difference and if they are progressive i like that if you're looking for maximum drop that might be the way to go and then when it comes to price $170, you might be able to find it cheaper, but just relatively speaking now, again, with the H&R and the Eibach a little higher, but the Megan Racing uh, a little cheaper, this comes in somewhere in between. It might be a good choice for some of you. We got a couple more left to go, so hang hang in there. We got a couple more. We'll, I'll put it all up there on a chart. You'll be able to compare, take a look at it. If you're interested in you know, buying based on price, great. We'll be able to, you, you can take a look at that. If you're looking at the spring rates or the quoted spring rates, I'll have all that up there for you. If you're looking for the, the drop, whether a minimum drop or maximum drop, you, you know, you'll have that listed as well. And then remember at the end, I'm gonna point out the two, um, only two, not four, the two lemons in purchasing springs that you really should be aware of. So just a couple more minutes, stay with me here. So the next one is the R RSR Downsus Springs and Jumping to their website, where is it? RSR, right here. So they're down to springs, retail at 279. Now I found them for 265, so not a huge difference, but I mean, I didn't go scouring the internet. You know, as far as a drop, the front ranges from one to 1.2 inches, the rear is 1.2 to 1.4 inches, and then to do the spring rate conversion, uh, again, for the RSR, this is 196 foot, uh, pounds per inch in the front and 217 pounds per inch in the back. And what is interesting is that it does appear that these are linear. It does not give a range when it comes to the spring rate. So these uh, Tian, uh, both their high tech and their S tech shocks, their high tech has a moderate drop of 0.8 inches, and then their S-TAC is 1.4 inches. They are linear as well at 174 pounds per inch in the front and 224 pounds per inch in the back for the high tech. And for the S-TAC, a more aggressive spring rate of 190 in the front and 235 in the rear. Not a huge difference when it comes to the spring rate. I found them for about 195. Um, $195 for both types, both the high tech and the S tech, as opposed to their website suggested or manufacturer suggested retail price of $345 and $360. And then the last one, so this is 10, here's number 10, the Godspeed Traction S. Go into their website, let's just take a look at what they have to offer here in a bright powder blue, retail price of $170. 
I have found these shocks for 153. The drop in the front is 1.3 inches. The rear is 1.3. This excludes hybrid. So just want to point out when I was looking at these, yeah, there might be a little bit difference in the 1.5 liter and the two liter and depending on your trim level, uh, but they're relatively the same. And they, all of these manufacturers offer them for both models. However, I'll tell you that a lot of them are excluding the hybrid. So if you have a hybrid, do your own research. Sorry, I didn't break it down by the hybrid model. Going back to these God Speeds, these for spring rates are progressive springs. These are 163 to 270 foot pounds. I'm sorry, pounds per inch in the front and 207 to 286 pounds per inch in the rear. Uh, it does indicate that they can be used with the OEM shocks, but aftermarkets are recommended. So that you know, looking at the list here, so let's take a quick look at it. Looking at the list of shocks that are available, you, it runs pricing from a low of 100, let's just call it 150 to as much as $265. So that's generally the range you're gonna be paying. So that's your price range. When it comes to the drop, you have some that range from 0.8 inches, probably to the, you know, on the lower side, not the lower side, the lower drop side to a high of two inch drop, which is pretty significant and everywhere in between. So you do get that choice. When it comes to the spring rates themselves, you need to consider whether you want progressive or linear. I prefer the progressive rate springs and then take a look at how that spring rate compares to one another, knowing that it may be an apples to oranges comparison. There it is. I hope that information helps and wait, I promise you, so the two lemons or the two potential lemons when it comes to buying springs for your 2018 plus Honda Accord. One is no matter what spring you get or how much of a drop, it is highly, highly, highly recommended that you buy a rear camber kit because as you drop that car, it's going to put your camber out of spec and it's going to prematurely wear your tires un ununiformly. Uh, so you definitely don't wanna have that. So as you're considering the cost of the springs, please consider the cost of a camber kit. Make sure you take that into consideration. Don't buy springs, don't lower your car and then and then have your, you know, your camber all out of whack, your alignment. You have to go in afterwards and get an alignment. Make sure that's taken care of. You wanna make sure you have even wear in your tires. You got good contact patch with the ground. Let's make sure that we're safe out there. So that's one. The second one, and this hits me pretty hard, is when it comes to the adaptive suspension that is in the 2019, well, the 2018 plus, the 10th generation Honda Accord Touring model. So the Touring model has adaptive suspension. And some of these manufacturers like H&R already indicated that it was never tested on the adaptive suspension, so they can't comment. Others have indicated yes, but it wasn't a clear, convincing, you know, yes to me. Your adaptive shocks are different than the shocks on the other trim levels, and it will change the ride characteristics of your car. So if you think your car rides really nice today, from a dampening perspective, you might want to really consider or reconsider lowering your car on springs. Or maybe you have a less aggressive drop and or a less aggressive spring rate uh, with your lowering. So I don't want you to get one of these springs not knowing that it really could have more of an impact on you owners of the touring model than it would on the other trim levels. So keep that in mind. The other aspect is that, you know, you also have the choice that whether it's for touring model owners or everybody else is you could move over to a coilover system. So I did gather a lot of information on coilovers. I'd like to go over that with you. However, I think we're out of time for today. So subscribe to the channel, turn on the notifications. And as soon as I post the information on coilovers, go over all the information. I'll also in that video give you an indication of which one I'm gonna go with, uh, whether it's coilovers or springs, and a little bit more information as to the why. You know, I'll post that in that video, but you know, hey, you're not gonna find out unless you subscribe and turn on notifications and stay with me. So until next time, thank you for joining.